Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 70-73 Carrier League card set analysis. Uh, tonight we're back in the 1972 box. Last time we got through half of the American League. We're going to go through the American League Midwest and West tonight and save the National League, I guess, for another time. But let's get going here with the... Sometimes you can call them the small market teams. Often named that. Except for the White Sox, of course. You got the White Sox with Kansas City, Milwaukee, and the Twins. So let's take a peek and see what we got going here for the Chai Sox. And we have something very good going here for the White Sox. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they made the trade for Dick Allen. Uh, they could jump right to this. Um, and if you're going to make the trade, and they gave up Orlando Cepeda in that trade, so I'm thinking you, got to, you should go right to this and get three years out of it, at least out of this card. Though he does have uh, good cards in 70 and 71 as well, but this is an MVP card. Interestingly, he could play a little bit of third base, but probably won't be needed to. Uh, yeah, definite first round pick right there. Um, don't even know why I would think of picking one of the other years after making the trade. So the point of the whole deal with Dick Allen was to have him go directly from Philadelphia to the White Sox without making stops in St. Louis and L.A. But next player is Carlos May. Another great card. And, uh, this would be the two players to take from 72. 308 also. Interesting. I mean, uh, what they do is these are the top two players in the 72 Sox. And Allen, they both had a 308 batting average, but what happened was apparently by percentage points, look at that. Well, the Dick Allen had 17 more at bats. No, Carlos May had 17 more at bats, so he must have hit less than 300 in those. So, um, yeah, Allen beat his teammate by a whisker for the batting and once you get past that that's it as far as the keepers go but that might be enough obviously keep those two guys and those are the two guys you would take in this box but we have to look at their rookies rich gossage a rookie takes a little bit of time to develop he's 428 yeah art cussinger and george orda needs some more time as well so those rookies are just too green, and it's not going to matter because Allen and Carlos May are clearly the two guys you want. All right, the Royals. Let's see if they can keep this magic carpet ride they've been on. From 69 onward, they've had great years since their inception. Pat Kelly. A uh, great leadoff guy again. Doesn't hit lefties like he normally can. Um, Ed Kirkpatrick interestingly he's not as versatile as he once was you could play the outfield and third base and all sorts of positions but he can hit lefties well he's a full time player wherever you decide to play I'm going to catch her at first now at first they're gonna, he's going to be blocked by Mayberry but at catcher I think they only have maybe Fran Healy on this team that's a nice full time catcher if, if for him or some team Got Lou Pinella with a 300 card here. These are some great cards we're seeing. Every card has been great for the White Sox and Royals. This division could be on the way up. So let's take a look now at their rookies. We flip them over. And now this Shine Bloom card is pretty darn good as a rookie, and it gets even better in 73. Yeah, it's a great card for Richie Shine Bloom. But, uh, I mean, he's got a really good card next year as well in 73, so you, can, you might as well wait. An embarrassment of riches. Something, you know, for these downtrodden teams, or, or at least these small market teams. they got some good guys in the wings. Now, Milwaukee, they're not, we're not at Robin Yount territory yet, and so forth. They went out in the offseason and traded for Steve Hovley. He's a nice corner outfielder. Power, both ways. 
and you'd leave him in the game against lefties. That's a full-time player right there. Maybe this is why you traded for him. It's a 270 card. For a corner outfitter, you'd like a little bit more bang for your buck. But he can run the bases pretty well, too. He's fine. He's okay. Nothing amazing about him, but he's worth being in the league. Ken McMullen, solid third baseman, everyday player. Probably gets 20 homers or close to it in a full season. 09, 269 hitter. Oh, I guess he needs a little more punch than that. But still, everyday third baseman, nothing special about it. He'll make the team with at least this card if, not, if they don't find a better one. Mincher, eh, not so much. Uh, normally, this is the type of card you get for this guy. Homers and walks, high on base percentage and OPS. Kind of a, get the idea this guy's probably a dead pull hitter. Um, just not enough punch there for him. And their rookie class. John Felsky, I don't see it. Mike Ferraro. Gary Ryerson. Nothing really stands out. And because it's Milwaukee's rookie class. So none of those guys would be on the Brewers team by the late 70s. There's no, you know, there's no Sixto Lizcano. There's no Gorman Thomas. There's no Robin Yount. No Jim Gantner or whoever. I mean, they're just not, they're not there yet. And uh, it'll take some time for this team will contend for a division title. Now the Twins. Again, we mentioned many times how this is transitioning twins because the Oliva Killebrew guys are getting older. So, Pete Reichert, they traded for him last year, and this guy keeps his career going. Nice year. This is probably the Reichert card we'll keep because um, the other Reichert cards are in competition with Paranowski and Killebrew cards. So assuming that Killebrew and Paranowski aren't taken from this year, Reichert will be. So I'm thinking this is the card they take. Because here's Killebrew, and he's he's still good, but not as good as he is in the previous year. 231, you see. Uh, yeah, he's much better in 70 and 71 than he is here. And that's when you look at the rookies... Bobby Darwin's a nice little rookie at corner outfielder, if you need one. Of course, you got got Tony Olivas that's blocking him in right field. That's a great card. Now, you you should get this into the league with one problem. Where do you play him? you got Tony Oliva as your right fielder. I mean, you could, I suppose, play him in the center field because you got rid of Cesar Tovar. But you traded for Larry Heisel, who's in left. So, well, he may have to wait. Dave Goltz. We know he'll pitch for the Twins and win 20 games. My goodness, look what he does against right-handed Look at that. that that's an, I've not seen this card with this distribution before. Uh, it's Yeah, it's kind of like you load up with lefties against them to beat him. Only 91 innings. So yeah, it's a great debut. Um, if you know, if you have a roster spot, great. But uh, you, can, you can wait and get him to pitch on three days rest. Glenn Borgman. Okay card for platoon catcher if they need one. They got George Mitterwald in the system. Eric Soderholm. Nice little third baseman here. Uh, but not yet. He's definitely platoon eligible. Third base against lefties is what I would call him if they need it. But you might as well wait until he gets better. We know Soderholm will do pretty well for the Twins, White Sox, Yankees, I believe. All right, and that's it for the uh, American League uh, North. So, American League Midwest, I should say. So let's get going out west. American League West, the west is best. Uh, we really are hoping now, and we're getting into the Oakland Dynasty years, so it's going to be pretty critical that Oakland makes all the right moves in the draft to achieve some of that, you know, great uh, draft uh, World Series success. But let's start with the Angels, who won the division, surprisingly won the division last year to the California Angels. And uh, Jay Johnstone... 
is starting to fade here. He'll come back later. He gets traded to the Phillies in his bat as more of a pinch hitter, platoon kind of guy does. It's a pretty great card for the Phillies in 75-6. Jim McLaughlin starts to fade a little bit. 391, decent. All right, Bill Singer. Uh, we didn't like a 71 card. I don't like this one either. It's either 70 or 73 that we're going to go with, with with Singer. Tovar, his defense starts to fall in center field, though he still brings base stealing and all that. Bad average also starts to dip. Nothing really good here out of the four keepers. Four, even though they have the four keepers, none of the four are particularly good. So it means, do we have somebody in the rookie class that would to replace them? Billy Parker, an infielder against lefties if needed. Nothing special, but as far as utility player, he could work. Don Rose. Oh boy, not... I'm not seeing that. No, not very good, is he? Eh, the stats are better than this card. That's just not going to cut it in the Carrier League. Homer there there, and there? No thanks. Very young Leroy Stanton. Has the range and arm that were his hallmark. Uh, never ever really put it together. I think later in his career with Seattle, he had a nice year where he had 27 homers. But actually, this is a pretty nice performance. Wish he could steal, he can't. Um, at least against lefties as a corner outfielder, he's nice. And can play raise if needed. So, he might be the guy you take from this box, like in the, the second pick up from the 72 box. I don't know what, California's kind of stuck here. So this might be the opportunity the A's are hoping for. You know, as the Angels should falter and the A's should return to the glory. So let's take a look at Oakland. The Oakland A's. Now, I said before that in 69 and 70 and 71, they're better than they are during the dynasty of 72, 3, and 4. Let's look at their... Bando, we like the 71 card better. So there you go, right? First card off the books. Up 236. We don't want that. This Dick Green card, I think he was hurt in one of these years. Yeah. So you could trick out Strat. He only had 42 at bats, but look at the batting average. So his batting average isn't very good in this four year period. If you're willing to put up with him being a three at second, that's, which is fine, uh, but you, he's often a two at second and known for his glove. So do you want his bat? You take this card. Do you want his glove? Take him when he's like a 2e8 in one of the other seasons. All right. Now, finally, Ken Oldsman. And yes, a very important member of the 1972 Oakland A's. A 19-game winner. Look at the innings pitched in ERA. And he came out of from the Cubs and suddenly turned it on with Oakland. This is the pick. So this would have to be the one of the two 1972 cards. Now with Reggie, we don't have to worry about Reggie because his 73 card is an MVP card. If for some reason we didn't take his 73 MVP card, this would be a nice consolation plot prize. Tons of power, still has great range and a great arm, not a great, uh, he was once an A stealer, not anymore. But this is a fine card, but if you want to take the other card, have at it. And looking at the rookies, George Hendrick actually came up with the A's. This is a fun little card with all that power against righties. Uh, but you probably don't want to. And you would want to wait for Hendrick because you know he's a great player eventually. So don't bring him up when he's not so good. 182. That's the only rookie, though. Yeah. Well, Ken Holtzman, though, could be... If you figure 73 Reggie Jackson will be the first round pick, 72 Ken Holtzman will be the second round pick, 71 Sal Bando, probably the third round pick, just off the top of my head, and all those cards are fantastic. And you can start to see him slowly, gradually get the dynasty together. All right, Seattle. Here we go. Now, they made a bold trade to acquire Matty Alou 
from the Pirates because uh, the Pirates needed room in their outfield and Matty Alou had to go. They had Stargell, Clemente, uh, they had to find a spot for Al Oliver, Al Oliver, they have Dave Parker coming up soon, so Al Lou had to go. So they shift them off to an American League expansion team. Now Al Lou's defense is suddenly gone, which is a shame. He's more likely a DH, but he's a full-time player. You don't mind what he does against lefties. It's probably 300 here, 314. So you're more than happy to have the speed and the bat in the lineup, and uh, Seattle will not care about the defense. Ted Oolander, he starts to lose it by this year. Still the great defensive player, but there's no stick left. you got to get one of his early, previous years. Now, Dick Woodson was a cool, interesting keeper. I think it's for this year. Yes. Going on the rotation with a 271 ERA, this is a smart play. Because here's a player that I talked about that uh, the maxim of the four-year carryover league is that every player is good at least once every four years. That's the maxim I use to justify this format. And here's your proof, Dick Woodson. So a, a team like Seattle is going to get their bang for the buck. They can get four years out of this guy. And after that, he turns into a pumpkin. But that's all right. The expansion teams have to look for new pumpkins every year. So, here are your rookies. It's a nice little Winston Lennis card. Second, third baseman. Good batting average. Again, the Mariners are always, I mean, this, these aren't bad guys at all. Now, here's Bill North. Um, not to be brought up yet. He'll come up with Oakland in a future year. He's not quite ready. 181. Not quite ready. That's Seattle. And our final team for the evening will be the Rangers. Texas Rangers, a team that is waiting for guys like Jeff Burroughs, Toby Hara, Mike Cargrove to bloom. They're not ready yet. Here's the Ranger. Got to do the Ranger thing there. But they've been holding on to Mike Epstein and Frank Howard, longtime Washington Senator players. So as Epstein gets blocked from going to the Oakland A's. And actually this is a Oakland card, I believe. Yes, it is. And you can see if you do not let Epstein go to the world champion Oakland A's and stays in Texas, that will hurt the A's and help the Rangers. So that's the play here. They're going to hold on to this guy and the A's are going to have to find some other guy like this, a, you know, like a, a Don Mincher type who we saw earlier in this would be a good Oakland player. Kind of a left-handed hitting first baseman that you don't mind if his defense is bad to repl since Epstein's no longer available. I'd take this card. That way the Rangers have him for three years and Oakland's, the A's will be out of luck. Bill Hands traded for him in the uh, previous year to get his 69-20 win card. And he's still very good here. And he pitches. Uh, he doesn't pitch on three days rest anymore. But he's still worth staying in the organization from 69 through at least 72 and possibly beyond. Don't worry about Frank Howard. We know we're taking his 1970 card. But it is nice to know what the future says. And it says, hey... Let him finish out his whole career with the Texas Rangers. He's good through 72, at least as a platoon player. 244, I get it. But he's worth being at least a platoon DH type, and he's not too bad against righties, and he's Frank Howard. So uh, that's what I would do with those guys. Let's look at their rookies, and there's a lot of them. Larry Bittner. That's decent. Uh, he's kind of like... He has the, uh, he looks a lot like a National League pinch hitter, doesn't he? Because that's what he would become for the Chicago Cubs later in the decade. Uh, no power, but on base. 259, 382 at bats, but that's weighed by the uh, performance against lefties. Bill Fahey, he's also not quite ready. And by the time he gets better, Jim Sundberg will be around and Fahey won't be needed. Joe Levito, play both ways, a switch hitter, interesting card, 
Actually, there's a lot of interesting, cool things about this guy. Range, arm, not a lot of errors, beast dealer, a lot of on base. So that's how you turn a... Statistically, he's going to look pretty poor, right? Yeah. 224 hitter, and you're like, hey, he's going to suck. But when you add up, he could get into the league as a defensive replacement outfielder, as a switch hitter. There is a silver lining for this guy. Jim Mason, well, first of all, a left-handed hitting middle infielder is always valuable. Unfortunately, the stick is not good enough, is it? 197. And that is your Ranger team. And so, that is it for the American League. And when we pick this series up next time, I might do the entire National League team. Get this box finished. We also have those nameless cards right here um, that I pulled out of the league. And we do have, we still have guys who are the famous waiver guys and some retired guys. But we know that the volume of cards is smaller because uh, these are guys put on waivers from 69. So the chances that they, were, they weren't good enough to stick around in 70 and now three years later, um, I'll just look at a couple here. Yeah, like Kurt Bleffrey, he's just sticking around. He seems to have the same 196 Mendoza line performance three years in a row and some other guys, but we can analyze these better when we do the 2560 series, which I do on Tuesdays, as we get the off-season going for the draft. So I hope you're enjoying these card set analysis. Uh, these, uh, it's fun to look at these cards, as this is a very unique set, the 1972 first edition super advanced set. Of course, 1971 was the first year Stratomatic invented the super advanced. And the 72 set is actually even more rare to find. Hard to find a complete set of those. Uh, thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.